Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 21 of Learn Lightroom 5. And in this episode, we're going to make a photorealistic HDR image. Now you remember in episode 20, we did an HDR image and we went over into Photoshop and made a 16-bit image and we did that weird tone mapping where we made this really bizarre image. When you do a 32-bit image, in Photoshop it's very photorealistic so if done correctly people won't even know that it was an HDR image and this comes in particularly handy when you have an image like this one here with this very very bright area in a relatively dark area so you want to make sure you capture all the tones and um, all the shades of gray you want them in the image so what we're going to do in this one, we're going to develop, do some light developing in Lightroom. Then we're going to take it over into Photoshop, create that 32-bit image, and bring it back in Lightroom to finish our developing. And you'll see how powerful it is, really. Before we do that, though, if you guys could subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate it. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go to the first image in the stack here. I made a 7-image HDR, and each one is one step apart with this one being what my camera considered to be the correct exposure for this scene. Then I did um, one step more exposed going, it's these uh, thumbnails going to the left, and one step uh, less exposed going to the right. Now, I confused someone when I was saying that last time when I said one stop, one stop this, one stop that, three stops. I don't mean f-stops. I left, I think I shot on f11. Yes, I usually do shoot on the F11 on shots like this. I left F11 alone on every on every shot, but as you could see, um, my shutter speed changed. So it's if you reduce your shutter speed one stop, it's it's you know the way you say it. So I don't mean F stops. I mean I left my shutter or my aperture at F11. My F stop was F11 all the way through. I just adjusted my shutter speed for each shot. So I was exactly one stop of, uh, less a light or more a light. Okay? All right, let's go to this first image. And we're going to do the uh, just some very uh, simple um, processing in Lightroom before we send it over into Photoshop. And what I did is in the previous episode is I turned clarity up a little bit, usually in the 30s somewhere. And um, then I go down to Lens Corrections, and I enable Profile Corrections. And that's all I do. Now I want to do that to all of these, so I'm going to hold the Shift key down and click on the last image in this stack. And then I'm going to click Sync. Now it comes up with this dialog box. I already have it um, checked in the right um, areas from the last time we did this. I'm going to sync clarity and lens profile corrections across all those images okay now it's done already now it still should be selected if it isn't do the uh, same thing by clicking on the first one hold the shift key down click on the last one to select them all now right click on any of them and we're going to go into edit in merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop now what it will do is it'll take these seven images and open them all up in Photoshop then it's going to open up uh, HDR preview window and as I mentioned in the last episode for some reason my Photoshop CC that preview win window is disjointed it like separates the image with this white band going down the middle and I don't know why it does that I've searched the Adobe forums and no one's ever had that problem so um, I mentioned before if anyone knows of you know what's wrong and could um, email me at Tony at Anthony or tell me on Twitter at Anthony Morganti. I'd um, appreciate it because it's kind of annoying. It doesn't affect the final image. It only sh The preview is only distorted. And curiously, I have still have Photoshop CS6 on this machine and in that it works fine. Um, so I'm not really sure why in CC it does this. But it's you know, makes it inconvenient when I'm trying to show you guys how it works. Okay, this is it here. This is what I'm talking about. This band here, it's not supposed to be there. And I really don't know what's going on. Okay, last time now, you know, we did a 16-bit image and we did all this tone mapping down here to make this really bizarre image. And I actually used a custom or a um, preset. I used Scott 5 
uh, to make the image. As you can see, if you know, disregarding this white bar here, that kind of makes it really bizarre. We don't want to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to do a 32-bit image. And as you can see, in a 32-bit image, there's almost nothing to choose from here. Okay, just make sure that you have remove ghosts checked. Okay, because it, well, this is an outdoor scene and it was windy, and so the trees were moving. So I'm going to check remove ghost. If you have a still life that you photograph, don't worry about that. It it goes a little faster if you don't have that checked. So I'm going to make sure that's checked. Make sure complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw is not checked because we're going to do our toning in Lightroom. So if you check this, what happens is when, you, when you're done here, it'll open up Adobe Camera Raw for you to do your tone mapping. Now this bar here is, is just kind of where you're going to be picking your white point. And um, it's, it's, you know, you don't want it way over here. Typically, I just move it all the way to the right, so every pixel's involved. All right, you you could if you could move it, you know, wherever you think you want it. Um, I'm just moving it all to the right, so I get every dark pixel there is in the in the shot. And then you click OK. Now what it will do, it's going to create the HDR image, and then it's going to open it up into Photoshop, and it's going to look like crap. But don't worry about it. All right, it's going to be a humongous. Uh, file and I'm talking if you're I think my um, typical TIFF files are uh, when I you know create them with uh, Photoshop or maybe around 50 to 100 meg this image is going to be 250 to 300 meg in size so it's huge so okay th this is our crappy looking image that I mentioned um, we're not going to do anything in Photoshop. Part of the reason why it doesn't look good is Photoshop really can't read 32-bit TIFF files. So it's kind of down converting it into 16-bit to display here. But um, luckily and happily, Lightroom does read 32-bit TIFF files. And so does Adobe Camera Raw. That's why it asked you if it w you wanted to complete the toning in Ado Adobe Camera Raw. We're not. We're going to do it, as I mentioned, in Photoshop. So what we're going to do is we're going to close Photoshop down. It's going to ask me if I want to save this. Yes, make sure you save it. And it will save this image and then open it up in Lightroom. Now, remember I mentioned this is a huge image. And to prove that, if you look at exposure slider here, it, we have 20 stops of exposure. Look, at it goes to plus 10 and minus 10. Now, I'll open up a normal raw file, and you'll see it goes from plus five to minus five. You see what? See all the way um, open, all the way overexposed. I get that. Whereas this image, when I go all the way overexposed, I get white. So it, it there's a lot more data in this file. So that's why I like doing 32-bit HDRs, particularly when I have images like this. So what we're going to do now, we're going to process, process this normally as we would any other file in Lightroom. So because there's so much more data there, we have a lot more, um, you'll see the results become a lot more uh, satisfying, I guess, for lack of a better term. So <clears throat> in this image, it's still a little bright, so I'm going to pull highlights all the way down. I'm going to pull shadows up. Now I'm not going to bring them all the way up like I uh, typically do because it's a little too bright, but I'm going to bring them up a little bit. I might readjust those later. Um, we'll see. The next thing I'm do before I do whites and blacks, I'm going to put a graduated filter in here. So I'm going to open up the graduated filter. I'm going to double click on effect to reset the sliders. I'm going to bring exposure down a little bit just to start and I'm going to hold the shift key down when I do this that way it makes it perfectly square and perpendicular uh, to the photo so I'm going to pull it down I'm going to pull it down over the whole thing okay now I'm going to take the temperature of this uh, graduated filter and I'm going to cool it a little bit by moving this to the left just slightly you'll notice these uh, adjustments 
you have a lot more to like the, there's so much data in there you just have to move them really a very little a bit to get the adjustment you want I'm going to move tint towards magenta a little bit too that further cools it off okay now the graduated filter is done now I'm going to go do my whites and blacks by holding the alt key down and when I push in the white or push in my mouse for the white slider you know from the previous episode screen turns black and I'm going to move it to the right until I just get some some color white or something creeping through and it is right there and I'm going to stop there now I'm going to do similarly to the blacks except I'm going to move to the left until I get some blacks coming through and right about there now it's still um, now it's a little dark in here so I'm going to go back to the shadows and I'm going to open that up just a little more and I'm going to add some clarity and I'm going to add some vibrance and then I'm going to add a little bit of contrast okay we're shaping up now I could hit the backslash key and that's where we started and that's where we are now <clears throat> Okay, now to kind of jazz it up a little bit, I'm going to add some brush strokes. And I'm going to open up the brush, double click on effect, or you could hold the Alt key down and the, uh, where it says effect turns into reset. I'm going to reset that. I'm, I want to mess around with some of these trees. So I'm going to um, bring, ex oops, didn't want to do that. I do that all the time. Um, I'm going to bring exposure up a little bit and I'm going to make a smaller brush by hitting my left bracket key and I'm gonna just paint on this tree here and I'm gonna paint on this tree here and I'm gonna paint on this tree here and I'm gonna paint on this tree here alright now I'm going to take saturation now we're still on this brush. I could do adjustments after I paint the brush or before I paint the brush. I'm going to turn saturation all the way up. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast, just a touch, see what that does. Okay, now this is before the brushes, or that brush, and after the brush. See, I just kind of brightened up and colorized these trees a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to do a new brush. We're going to reset it by double clicking effect. And this one I'm going to bring just a touch darker. And I'm going to make my brush a little smaller and I'm going to darken some of the stuff that's near where I just brightened. Oops. Just to add like like it's man-made contrast I guess for lack of a better term and I'm gonna turn saturation up on those also okay now this is before the brushes and after the brush okay so we just added some interest back in here okay now I'm gonna add a couple more brushes I'm gonna do new and I'm gonna double click effect to reset it and I'm going to bring exposure down and I'm going to bring clarity all the way up and I'm going to bring contrast up a little bit well quite a bit and then I'm going to paint in here it looks stupid now don't worry we're gonna we're gonna take care of that in a minute like right now why don't we do it right now I'm gonna adjust exposure just make it a little a little less or a little little more exposed technically we're going to do something over here, make a bigger brush by hitting the right bracket key and going up here and going over here. So basically I'm just adding some strokes to the sky. Oh, we'll keep doing that. I'm not sure I like that one. Let's see. Yeah, I don't like that one. So I'm going to hit the Alt key. Turns my brush into a into a eraser by you could tell by that minus sign. And we'll take this out of there. Okay. 
And uh, I guess that's it. We can see what does in here. Yeah, that's, I guess, okay. And, uh, okay, so that's it for the sky. Now I'm going to get a new brush. And I'm going to double-click Effect to reset it. Uh, this time I'm going to turn Clarity all the way down. And I'm not going to really do anything else. I'm going to make a bigger brush. And I'm going to just blur this water a touch. There's just a little bit too much specular highlights in that water. And um, it's just dis a little distracting. So I want to tone that down. So um, by uh, turning clarity all the way down, see that before, see it's just a little too, like too many specular highlights in there. Kind of takes your eyes off. I want people to see these trees in the sky. And um, to further help them see the trees, the cab in the sky, is I'm going to do a couple more brush strokes here just for the heck of it. So I'm going to click on New, and I'm going to reset it. And I'm just going to take exposure up just a touch, and I'm going to just do something like this. Like this. All right, so that helps bring people's eyes up towards this, you know, middle colorful part. And um, while I was doing this, I noticed something else. The cabin's a little dim, so I'm going to um, brighten that up too. I'm going to do another new brush. Oh, it's easier to do keep doing new brushes. That way, if you make a mistake or you decide you don't like it, you could just take one of the brushes away and it doesn't affect everything. And plus, you could individualize your adjustments um, for each brush. So we're going to bring this cabin up a little bit in brightness, just a little. OK, I think I'm finally done with brushes. And let me hit the backslash key. That's the 32-bit image that came over from, Lightroom, or from Photoshop. And this is what we've done to it so far. And uh, that's it. You know, it's because it's got so much data in it. You're going to find it's very noise-free. So I'm not even going to bother with bother with the detail slider, doing any sharpening or anything like that. I'm just going to go right into Effects, and I'm going to uh, add a slight vignette. As you guys know, I, I I normally do. That further helps draw everyone's attention towards the middle. Now, at just first glance. I think this brush down here is a little bit too bright. So that's why we do these individual brushes. I could now um, just tone this one down a little bit. So we're at minus or plus 32, maybe around plus 23 would be a little more, um, I don't know, a little better. So that's it. That's um, Now you get the idea when you do a 32-bit HDR image, you can't really tell that's an HDR image. It doesn't have that typical HDR over the top look. But what it did do, it allowed us to create this huge file that had tons of data in it, and we could really, um, uh, you know, tickle the, the file to bring out all this extreme detail everywhere in the shot. So um, I hope you guys would use that a lot. The 32-bit um, HDR image, if you have a very um, high contrast image with a lot of brights, bright areas and still a lot of dark areas, and you want to bring each out. So that's it for episode 21. Um, I appreciate everyone watching. And if you guys could do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would be really grateful. And if you could share the videos too, that would um, uh, that I'd really uh, like, appreciate that. So again, thanks for watching.